Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Fabio Correa. Welcome to our class in which I am going to explain the indirect object pronouns in Spanish. Are you ready? The indirect object pronouns, what are those? The indirect object pronouns are the recipients of the action. So in Spanish, like in any other language, we, it's very easy to identify for whom or to whom we certain actions are completed. Take a look at these sentences. I serve dinner to my mother. I give my exam to the teacher. They buy a book for Susan. I want you to think for a moment who are the recipient of these actions. Once you find out for whom or to whom these actions are executed, you immediately identify the indirect object. Let's take a look at the first example. Who is the recipient? You guessed it, my mother. Who is the recipient in the second action? My teacher, correct. How about the last sentence? Good, Susan is the recipient of the action. These three individuals are the recipients and therefore indirectly receive the action. That's why we call them indirect objects. And we have pronouns to replace them. Let's take a look at how we do this. So instead of saying, I serve dinner to my mother or to my mom, you might say, I say I serve dinner to her. So to her is literally the pronoun that we use to replace my mom. In Spanish, it will be a little bit easier, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. So the word her is really replacing uh, the person, the recipient of the action, okay? My mom. In Spanish, what are the indirect object pronouns? They are identified as O-I, so they help us replace those. Um, pay attention in the sentence for these key prepositions, two and four, because as you can see in English, they refer to as a recipient. I do something for someone, I do something to someone, okay? They can replace to avoid emphasis. If you decide not to replace the indirect object pronoun, that is totally fine, it's up to the speaker. But be prepared that if you are speaking to a native speaker, they might replace it and you need to be aware of what that pronoun means, okay? The pronoun must agree, again, with gender and number. So pay attention to the person, to the recipient. Let's take a look at what are the pronouns. These are the ones that we use in English, right? I use me, you, him, her, us, you, or them. And in Spanish, it's a little bit different. Take a look. Me, te, le. Very interesting because we only use le for him, her, or if you refer it for it, in the case it's an object. Nos, os, only used in Spain, but it's very popular in the peninsula, Iberian Peninsula, and les for all the plurals. We have a dilemma here. What to do with le? and less because they replace more than one person. So we have a solution for that and I'm gonna explain that in a second. Take a look at this. Please try uh, to place the indirect object pronoun before the verb, if you see only one verb, obviously. Example, I give the book to you. Yo te doy el libro. I did not replace the what, I replaced the to whom or for whom. Okay, so te comes before the verb, very easy. In the case that you have two verbs, again, you have two options. Option number one, you place it before the verb. Yo te voy a comprar un regalo. I'm gonna buy you a present. Option number two, you attach it to the second verb. Voy a comprarte un regalo. Notice that I attach it to the second verb. If you don't feel comfortable making this transition of adding an extra syllable to the second verb, be comfortable with option number one, placing it before the two verb structure. See, that's simple. Let's talk a little bit more about what to do with indirect object pronouns that have that problem of replacing several people. What we do in Spanish is we clarify at the end of the sentence to whom or for whom these actions are executed. Take a look. <clears throat> for me, 
a mí, a ti, a él, a ella, a usted. That's how we solve the problem of ley. A nosotros, a nosotras, a vosotros, a ellos, a ellas, a ustedes. This last three replaces less and it makes us clarify. Let's take a look at some examples. <clears throat> ¿A quién le das la tarea? To whom you give the homework. You might respond, yo le doy la tarea al profesor. So it's very easy for us to tell a mi profesor to clarify that le is him. I could just simply say, le doy la tarea. But the speaker, the recipient of the action may not understand who is this le. That's why we use a mi profesor. ¿A quién le vas a comprar regalos? Les voy a comprar regalos a mis padres. Notice I said a mis padres to clarify the use of less. Or you can attach it to the second verb. Voy a comprarles un regalo a mis padres. See? By using the preposition a and stating to whom that action is performed clarifies the use of le or less. You can use this same structure with other people, like to me, but it's not necessary. But in third person, singular and plural, it's probably a good idea to clarify it, all right? Let's take a look. Which verbs would use an indirect object? Be very attentive of what kind of verb they use this. There are certain verbs that immediately makes us think, yes, this verb has a recipient. Take a look. Servir, decir, mostrar, regalar, mandar, dar, enseñar, prestar. All these verbs can be performed for someone or to someone. For example, take a look at the verb servir, to serve, to whom. That's why we need an indirect object pronoun with that verb. Not all the verbs require indirect object pronoun. Let's try. If I say in Spanish, el profesor explica la lección a mí, teacher explains the lesson to me, what would be the pronoun that you would use to substitute to me? Correct, me. El profesor me explica la lección. To make emphasis, I would say a mí, to me. La niña da regalo a sus primas. La niña da regalo a sus primas becomes la niña les da regalos a ellas. I use less to substitute primas, and I say a ellas as the pronoun to substitute primas. So this sentence is much shorter, much abbreviated, and that's the way we speak in Spanish. One more example. El jefe presta dinero a sus empleados. The boss lends money to his employees. The employees are the recipient of the action, correct? So what would be the pronoun that we use? We will use less. How many verbs do we have here? Just one. So let's place it before. The answer would be, el jefe les presta dinero, and then I clarify to whom? As ellos. I don't need to replace employees. By saying them is enough. Let's take a look at more example. ¿Quién te sirve la cena? If I ask you this question, I would like to ident you to identify who is the recipient of the action. I give you a hint in the question. ¿Quién te prepara la cena? Who prepares you dinner? So the answer might include me in the response, correct? Because I am the recipient. So what do you think will be the response? Right. Mi mamá me sirve la cena. My mom serves me dinner. You don't need to clarify to me. It's optional. If you do, it's totally up to you. Take a look. ¿A quién les da exámenes el profesor? To whom the teacher gives exams? You guess it. El profesor les da exámenes a los estudiantes. 
Here, it's very important to clarify to the students. Otherwise, less will be very ambiguous. ¿A quién les dices la verdad? To whom you tell the truth. Think for a moment. Your friends, right? Good job. So, les digo la verdad a mis amigos. I tell the truth to my friends. I added less because it's important in Spanish to identify the person who is the recipient of the action. Remember, let's clarify and let's summarize all the uses of the indirect object pronouns. What? The indirect object pronouns replace the recipient, not the object. They replace the person who will receive the action, okay? Make sure that you use it only to emphasize, particularly in the third person singular and plural, by introducing the preposition a, okay? Also, when do we place this direct indirect object pronouns? Remember, one verb before the verb, two verbs before the verb or attached to the second verb. When do we use it? Only in the case that we need to substitute the person to whom this action is being performed. I hope you understood this concept quite well. And I hope this video has helped you. Thanks for watching. Please click the Advantage logo to subscribe. Muchas gracias. Nos vemos hasta la próxima.